Welcome in everybody to a brand new episode of Audio Knots, episode number 21. We're finally legal to drink to get the hammered on the podcasting. I am yeah. your co-host, uh, Eric Oldboy, online with the always man of mystery, the one, the only, Mr. Ren. What are you drinking, Ren, for your uh, 21 and over uh, podcast? It's funny because I pulled out my mug yeah. and it's Disneyland. Hey, I see you have a Disneyland shirt on too. I do. Mine says Westeros and has a bunch of uh, dragons burning <laughs> down, <laughs> burning down Disneyland. So I got my uh, Coke and rum in here. Coke and rum. I brought, I haven't opened it yet, but I've brought my Michelob Ultra Pure Gold Organic Light Lager. Uh, it's basically water, but that also means yeah. that it's only 2.5 carbs because uh, may some audio nuts may or may not know that I am still, I'm not fully keto anymore now that I've lost like 75 pounds, but uh, I'm uh, carb light. So this, this falls right into my carb light lifestyle. Nice. So you drink a few of those and be okay. And we're 21, so we can. We're 21. We should, uh, like, today's probably not the day, but I, I, I still think it'd be fun to have a full episode where we're just already, like, kind of, like, I don't know, not drunk, but maybe buzz going into it. Who knows what kind of crazy things we might say. Right. Maybe, like, if we record on, like, a Friday night or something. Yeah, that's the key. We got to pick yeah. on a weekend. Um, I actually start back to work tomorrow, and I know you start back on Monday. And so, oh, so damn. I, yeah. Sucker. I know, I know, I know. I am a sucker. I have to go in and prep some stuff for the peeps. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's, we can still do fun things like this in between. You know what's cool? Uh, I just realized that yeah. um, we, since we're going back next week, we get Memorial Day off. Yeah. I know. I think we've timed it pretty well. I think we've done well with our, uh, our um, sheltering in place. Now we get to go back to work. So our, yeah. for the audio nuts out there, we've talked about how we work at a medical company and we get to go back because Oregon um, has allowed some counties to open back up as of tomorrow. And um, our county that our business is in is one of those that got to open back up. And so we're pretty excited about it. Uh, and there's some new requirements. We all have to wear face masks and stay six feet apart and all this other stuff. Um, it's kind of funny, you know, to wear a face mask while you work on your computer, but you know, I get it. They're going to supply for us. Or you got to bring your own. No, they said they would supply them, but you can bring your own if you want to. So you could totally choose. Right. I don't think right. anybody cares as long as you got something covering your, your face holes. Right. That's the real trick. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is the last of our unpaid vacations <laughs> and we're going to go back to the real world, which I'm, I'm excited about. I think I function better in the real world. I, uh, I start off really good whenever I have this kind of thing happen. You know, when you're at home, I start really good with all sorts of things to do. You know, I'm like a project after project. And then as the days and weeks progress by, I get lazier and lazier. Yeah. And then I'm spending entire days watching Star Wars or I'm spending entire days like playing a game on my phone. I mean, it's, I could spend an entire day staring at Twitter. I, uh, I got so bored that I bought a fish. That's right. Tell us about your fish. Yeah. I saw the picture of it. Yeah, so it finally came in yesterday. You little, ordered the fish? Yeah. It came in like, the mail? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> okay, like, you guys tell me how they, how they ship a fish. Yeah, so basically, I tried going to the pet store, and they, they're not taking any more um, shipments, right? Yeah. So they're, they're, like, low on stock, in stock of, of fish. And I wanted, like, a beta fish, you know? Yeah, it seems like a pretty common any. pet store thing. Yeah, so I, I looked at, like, websites where they, like, breed a lot of them, and they're pretty spendy. They're pretty spendy. I don't, know, I don't want to tell you how much I spent on mine, but it's pretty. Did it cost more than $10? Yes. Oh, we'll leave yeah. it at that. I will yeah. not ask. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I have, uh, as we've spoke about in the past, I have a, a handful of kids. I have three kids, so I've purchased many a beta fish over the years because that's a great starter fish because it takes just a little tank. It doesn't take all the other garbage that – some more fish require and uh yeah the fact that you had to pay more than 10 bucks it, it makes it me sad a little bit for you right because I, I watch a lot of videos and yeah. it's actually pronounced beta right because it's really? two a's but i've always said i always say like beta like i have always said fish. that too yeah yeah beta fighting fish or when we were young we called them siamese fighting fish and i don't know if that yeah. sounds racist now i have no idea <laughs> yeah yeah so I was looking at websites. They got really cool ones. But then the ship, sh shipping cost is like 18 bucks for shipping. I'm like, 
I'm not gonna pay that trash, you know? That's crazy. Yeah, it's like I could buy like multiple fishes, you know. Right. And so I uh saw that eBay had some. You bought a beta fish on eBay? <laughs> yeah. So what? I went to the dark web of eBay <laughs> and I got one. It's crazy. That is crazy. Okay, what's your beta fish's name? Um Krillin. Krillin? Yeah. Like the krill from Guardians of the Galaxy, or is this something else? No, Krillin from Dragon Ball. Oh, see, the, we, we, the, we've learned in the past. Yeah. I don't know Jack Squad about <laughs> anime. He's basically the greatest character in the Dragon Ball franchise, and people may argue me argue with me with that. Oh, well, who would they argue against? Because who? he's not really a, he, he's not really a fan favorite. He's like a psychic. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you have a, a beta fish named Krillin who's a sidekick in an anime that you enjoy. Yeah. Nice. What color is it? It's a, um, they call it a galaxy koi, and it's a half moon tone. Nice. Um, When you bought it, I'm sure they give you more facts. Maybe you're pinning and spending more than 10 bucks on a fish. Yeah. Like, uh, what's the lifespan, supposedly? Well, they say that if if you buy from breeders, you get like three or four years out of it. Wow. But if you buy it from like the pet store, like pet goes of the world, you right. get like a year or so. So it's yeah, we've had uh, it's been a mixed we'll bag. See. All the ones yeah. we've ever had, we had we had one that lasted forever, just refused to die. I mean, years and years and years. And then we've had a ton of them. They didn't make it past a month or two. <laughs> they like tend to make it past the because you buy them at Petco, they give you thirty days. Your fish dies yeah. within thirty days. You just bring back your bag of dead fish, and they'll give you a new one. But uh, we had many of just make it to like day 34 and croak. So hopefully your fish lasts a long time. Does it have a warranty? No, man. It's eBay. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> their, their, their only guarantee is it gets there alive. Okay. And it did. Yeah. How, how does it show up? Is it in like a, a, a plastic container box or some sort? Oh, basically, you know how you buy fish from the pet stores where they put in a little bag? Yeah. So it's in the bag and they wrap it up. And then they just stuff a box like with other stuff to like cushion it. And they have like a little heat pack in there so it's warm. Yeah. That's it. That's amazing. I would think that that fish would get so jostled around yeah. in the like the UPS van or wherever it came via. And yeah. it would be like just like crazy stressed out. Yeah. Cause when, when I used to start, um, raise betas, I used to like put them in little tanks because they're not yeah. at the store. They're in little tanks, right? Yeah. But I've been doing like a lot of research before I bought it. And they recommend at least like two and a half gallon tank. Okay, so a little bit bigger. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, when you buy them in the store, they're like something like the size of an eight ounce glass. Yeah. So if you want to raise one, you should raise one in at least two and a half gallon or more. Got it. Mine's we a have three a tank gallon, like so, that. I can actually yeah. see it from here, from where I'm sitting. I can see an old crusty tank, probably from the last beta fish we had, that I would say is probably a, like a three gallon or so tank. If I ever start breeding, you know, I'll give you one. Nice. How do you breed them? Because like when I was when I was a terrible Ute, we would go to this one pet store that was famous for beta fish. They had like lots of them, and like a bunch of little dicks. We would roll around and we'd dump them into the same container because they were just oh. like you said, they were in like these cups. So we'd yeah. pop the lid off the cup and dump it into another one, and then watch them battle until one of them quit moving. <laughs> and so that, that's terrible. Yeah, Peta's gonna come after me now. But yeah, yeah. I don't do that anymore. But you're basically um, you're basically playing Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, I was being a douche is what I was doing. But how do you how do you breed them? How do you I guess if it's a male and a female, they don't fight like that? Well, if you put them together, they like one of them's gonna attack the other. So you have to like introduce them in like the same tank sort of thing and mm-hmm. have a little like blockage so they okay. kind of see each other sort of thing and get to know each other. Right. And then they do the dirty. Ah. Yeah. So does that mean you're gonna buy another twenty dollar beta fish later? maybe <laughs> now i need a female yeah oh, okay that's cool very very cool well that's exciting maybe you become a big time beta breeder maybe um i'll take a, a photo of my tank and i'll post it on twitter or something yeah you should totally do that i i knew a guy so i, well, I didn't really know a guy i knew of a guy so in a, in a former life i used to own a swimming pool and spa store and the swimming pool and spa store was pretty lame because we didn't have any money, real money to do it too big. And we were basically, I don't know if anybody out there ever been to like, um, it's like retail businesses, but it's almost like they're in storage units. So it's like this kind of big 
like pull up things and each one, one might be like a mechanic and you move down the next one next to it is something else. And like, well, next guy's like, you know, AC repair, that kind of thing. And so I was in one of those types of storage unit type places. And, um, I was on the very end and I was the pool and spa store and next to me was the mechanic. And then I think maybe a plumbing agency or something. And then after that though, was this random like dirty guy that was like, uh, making, making fish and lizards and nice. tarantulas and bugs. And so he's making all these like random exotic pets that he would sell, I guess now to people like you on eBay and, uh, pet stores and things like that. And I'd met him a couple of times because he, he, he took me over there to show me and it was kind of gross and he did have all sorts of weird stuff. And that was his whole deal is he just hang out in there. I think he may have even lived in there and he'd hang out there and make the stuff breathe. And I kind of forgot about him because he kind of kept to his own and he was like, I said, a couple units down. So I didn't see him. But in the summertime, right. we would pull up the big open door so people could drive up and come buy their chemicals for their pools or the spas. And we had a couple pools and stuff set up. And we had all these like 15 gallon like things of heavy chlorine powder, like big buckets. And uh, I was hanging out and it'd be like, cause it wasn't a big area for swimming pools. <laughs> it would be like entire days where I just kind of hung out and didn't do anything. One day I was just kind of chilling. The door was slid open and this fool had something happened where one of his tarantulas got out Ooh. and it came running in the, in, it came running through the big bay door. And it scared the crap out of me. I'd never seen a spider that big in my right. life. And so I jumped up and we had a big counter. I jumped up on basically the counter where you check out. And luckily next to me on that counter was a 15, <laughs> 15 pound bucket of chlorine powder. And I held it over it and I smashed, <laughs> I smashed this guy's tarantula. And so uh, he came down later on. It was way later too. It wasn't like the same day or anything. Like days later, he came down and said that he'd lost, um, lost this, this spider and that not to worry if I saw it because it wasn't venomous. He takes the time to oh, leave it. Oh, now he tells you? Yeah, it, it was worth like $65 or something. And so I'm like, man, I haven't seen it. <laughs> Little did he know I'd already smashed it and cleaned it up. But those things splatter really good. So if you're ever attacked by a tarantula, anything over 15 pounds will crush it solid. Just, that's my hot fact with weird breeders of stuff. Maybe he's like listening to the podcast. He's like, wait a minute. Sal just that's like, what happened to me? He owes me $65. Yeah. Yeah, that's ugh, it creeps me out. I'm glad that you got a beta fish and not a spider because it's kind of weird. It's, it's funny because, like, you know, I bought it from eBay and I, I got into the rabbit hole of like, how the hell do you sell on eBay, right? Like, right. how are you able to sell this stupid fish on eBay? Like, how yeah. easy is that? Do you need a license or anything? Do you? I don't know. But I um, started looking at videos of how to sell stuff on eBay. Yeah. And I started selling stuff on eBay, dude. Really? So, yeah. like, just, like, random stuff? You know how I, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of, like, figurines and toys? Yeah. So, I took one of, one of my toys that I have a double of. Yeah. It's a... Um, legend zelda wolf link okay little like amiibo for the uh, switch and um basically what you do is there's, there's like a little um uh little icon that says listing and you start yeah. listing your your items and all you do is scan the barcode with your phone and then it finds other um item that looks just like it and you just copy what they do and list your own take your own photos wait so you did the whole thing from your phone yeah nice so it tells you like the average, um, how, about how much the toys are, are selling for and you yeah. just kind of pick your price so you can like do the, you know, the bidding, the bidding. Well, that's what thing. I was wondering. Cause I haven't, I, I used to really be into eBay when it first started. Cause you would sit there like a creep and like, yeah. you'd wait until like the last second and then bid like a really <laughs> low <laughs> price and hope you get yeah. it. And that was always kind yeah. of fun. But the last few times I've even looked at eBay, it seemed like everything's just for sale. It's not really a bidding type ish, you know, yeah. situation so much. Well, when you're listing an item, you could like choose to bid it, to have a bid, or just like have a final sell on it. Right. So what did you do? So I I did like a final sell. Okay. So I I posted for um thirty nine ninety nine. Okay. And I got it, and then someone bought it. Like, oh, somebody bought low. it. Like forty bucks, dude. They so how does the shipping, shipping part of it work? So basically, you you know you put your your um, item. And then you kind of like estimate how much it's going to cost for shipping. Yeah. 
And then once you one day once they pay for it, you just box it up and send it to them. Because like eBay is connected with PayPal, that's connected to like UPS, or whatever. Right. So do you have to like take it to like a UPS store? Yeah. You uh, you print off the sticker, just get yeah. it on the box, and then drop it off. Oh, huh. that seems pretty easy. Yeah. So I, I like, took a bunch of my toys and started like listing them. So you far, have to I let sold me one know. item. Yeah, you have to let me know how that goes. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I probably have junk I can hawk on eBay. I haven't thought about eBay in forever. Yeah, try try getting like one of your comic books and you can just oh. scan it. Scan the barcode and see if like anything pops up. Interesting. That's a really good idea. Do people sell a lot of comics on eBay? Uh, I haven't checked. But it's what I did for my Call of Duty game just for fun. Yeah. And it worked. Did you sell that too? No, it's still on the list. Hmm, I might try that though. Like I like, cause you're right. I've been wanting to um, unload my comic collection. And I think I have some that are worth something and I'd probably get more from someone on eBay than I would from a collect or a, a yeah. store, like a comic store or something. Yeah. Cause there's an option. You can see like the most recent sell of the item that you're trying to sell to. Yeah. And you just kind of like go off that price in a way. Right. You had to be lucky to him. Cause maybe that guy, the one guy that wanted to pay for it, it's done. Yeah. <laughs> He's already bought it. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. That's awesome. Um, that'll lead into a perfect story I have later about online shopping because there's been a real online shopping boom. So we'll talk nice. about that For in a reals. little bit. But what else have you been up to other than uh, buying beta fish and selling stuff on eBay? You been watching anything good? Um, yeah, I finished Upload. Oh, what'd you think? I actually really enjoyed the show. Yeah, it was good, huh? Yeah. And I hate the fact that it ended the way it ended. Like, gosh darn it, dude! Like, like you, you, you don't feel any like satisfaction. You're like, I don't know anything. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, on, it was def a definite cliffhanger, and they yeah. they made sure we had to wait. Cause, but what the good news is, I did see that it's already been renewed for season two. So okay, you don't good. have to worry about at least not finishing that portion of the story. Hopefully. Yeah, because like you, sometimes when they they leave a show, you kind of know who's involved. Right. But this one is kind of like, dude, you don't know anything. You you kind of suspect stuff, but you're like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah, because the whole time you're thinking that it might be one person, and then they give you this thing where like, oh, okay, it's not that person. And so yeah, you, you never really hone in completely. But I think I think we kind of know who killed them. Dude, I had a theory like midway through the um, show, of you know the scene where the the aunt or the cousin, whatever. Yeah. She wanted the footage and she saw like the girlfriend going back to the car and messing right. with it, you know? Yeah. I thought, I thought that whoever killed him made a like 3d print of him, like a clone, oh. you know, when they were doing the download. Yeah. The, the like Oscar Meyer clones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I thought that maybe they did a clone of the girlfriend and they were able to download someone onto her. Right. Mm hmm to frame her, his girlfriend and kill her. Oh, like, interesting. I was like, they shouldn't have done that, dude. That's pretty Yeah, that would have been, a, that would, well, maybe something like that will still happen because they did show us the weird clone for some reason. So maybe that will yeah. lead into the more of the mystery. It's going to be like, this is our prequel to like uh, Alter Carbon. Uh, <laughs> it started off so nice and genuine. <laughs> and I was telling my wife, I was like, everything you see here, right? It's what Amazon's working towards. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right? Everything's going to become reality. Because you see at the, like, the, the, the convenience store with the robots doing everything. I was like, dude, that's going to be Amazon's future right there. Yeah, that's going to be all the Whole Foods. Because yeah. they have those Amazon stores. Now they have one in um, Washington that you can roll into. And if you have an Amazon Prime account, as long, it recognizes it when you walk in. Right. And you can take whatever you want. Just throw it in a bag and walk out. You don't have to stand in line or anything. Cause it realizes when it leaves with you. And so then it just charges it to your Amazon account yeah, that exists that today. Happened. Like that can happen right now. And that makes so much sense. Like when part of it, like when you heard about that kind of story, I thought, well, that's kind of weird. Are people going to want to do that? It feels like you're stealing almost. But now that we live in this, like no touch society, yeah. you start to wonder what Bezos knew that we didn't. You're saying he made a virus. <laughs> well, <laughs> This will also lead to another story I have later about Jeff Bezos and uh, the wonder and how he's gotten to be so dang rich. Damn, so many teases. Yeah, so many teases. What else have you been watching now that we're in the healthy stream? And I also finished Dummy. 
Oh, good. Yeah. Wasn't the last two episodes of that show wild? I mean, yeah. <laughs> the whole concept it's, of that show is uh, pretty bizarre to begin with, but I felt like they really pushed the limits in those last two episodes, especially that spoiler alerts. I won't get too detailed, but here's a few spoilers if you haven't seen Dummy at all. Um, when she invites the neighbor boy into her apartment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that was so cringy. I'm like, I'm hoping it doesn't happen, please. And I feel like it might happen. Yeah, and like the whole time I kept thinking, this is supposedly based on this real life story of this lady. Did she ever try to seduce a 14-year-old? Right. (laughs) So crazy. Yeah, it caught me off guard. But yeah, that episode and then the um, the episode where they're getting robbed, that really dark turn that that took. Oh, like yeah. those two moments, I thought, man, man alive, I did not see that coming. It's like, wait, you're Dan Harmon's girlfriend? I really like Dan Harmon. You know what's funny, though? When he's like unzips and pulls out his shirt. This is a Rick and Morty shirt. Yeah, it's a Rick and Morty shirt. Dude, that's like the shirt I bought my wife. And then my wife's like, that's my shirt. <laughs> Dude, it's so it makes funny. it relatable. Yeah. And then after that, Kapow is like, yeah soup like a like a shockwave dude. like what the that i like i think i may have told you right after i saw that episode that i was not nice because i was busy i watched uh, that show where i eat my lunch so i was busy shoving my face full of salad and that nice. uh, it almost made me choke it startled startled me so bad wow. i was like ah. yeah yeah it wasn't really it wasn't unexpected it was unexpected you know like yeah because that's not the kind of show it was up until that moment like that right. like you weren't like certain shows you expect that kind of thing to happen but not this one so yeah. that was pretty cool. What else? What else have you been watching? Anything else? And I started on Solar Opposites. Oh, okay. I just, love it. just the first episode, though. Um, so you've only seen episode one of Solar Opposites? Yeah. Where, like, the two fused and became big. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Solar Opposites is made by, we talked about this in the past, is made by Justin Rowland. And I guess one of the head writers off of Rick and Morty. Um, for Hulu, it's a Hulu exclusive. And what was kind of cool is they did um, drop all 10 episodes or eight episodes, eight episodes, yes. They dropped all eight episodes at once. And I'm not ashamed to admit that I binged it in two days. So I watched nice. uh, all of Solar Opposites. And for me, I don't know about you, like it took me a minute because I went into it thinking Rick and Morty because the voices sound like Rick and Morty, the animation styles like Rick and Morty but it's distinctly a different show. And so you have to kind of shake loose of the whole like Rick and Morty-ness of things, you know? Like a lot of times Rick and Morty can be kind of almost like, they're, they like make you think about like the big picture and really what's happening. And like, it, it can be kind of depressing sometimes, but that's what I like about Rick and Morty. And so this show is more of a silly comic version of what happens when aliens get stranded on Earth. It's pretty funny though. Like I enjoy the first episode a lot. Like it gives you glimpses of like Rick and Morty, where like the dude is like a scientist, you know, like we gotta right. do this and stuff, stuff like that. But then when it goes back to the kids, where they like stream create the little like the chick and stuff like that. And- yeah, they they do a really good job of building the characters through the season. And um, I don't want to give anything away because you're still into it, and probably a lot of the listeners are still just starting it. But um, after like. If you're like me and you got kind of like, wait, this isn't Rick and Morty. It took me about two or three episodes to get into the rhythm of the show. And then I really started liking it. And it's a good show from the beginning, like you're saying. But I really started digging it once I started. I was watching Solar Opposites. I wasn't watching a Rick and Morty spinoff. And then by episode seven, episode seven is fantastic. It's a not only is it the best episode of uh, the season for Solar Opposites, it's just one of the best episodes of TV I've seen in a little little while. For real? And yeah, it's such a great episode of TV. And it's it reminded me of the kind of thing that, now I'm going to go back to Rick and Morty a little bit, where you have the Rick and Morty adventures, but then they have those like Citadel episodes, you know, the Citadel of Mortys and Ricks and that yeah. stuff. And they yeah. get like, you see this whole like different world that's almost separate from Rick and Morty. That's what they did here in episode seven and it was so good that i was thinking because i've been watching a lot of crappy netflix movies lately i thought that episode alone was better written than the majority of the crappy netflix movies i've seen in recent days damn yeah so uh i i've seen it all the way and i really recommend solar opposites it's super fun uh i really enjoy it so far and i think you're gonna like it and something to watch for and you can tell me since you've only seen the one episode 
Um, I don't think this is a spoiler, but um, I'm curious. And I, I think that they play it just um, not, they don't tell you yet that I was wondering if the two main characters are like together. Like I know they're partners in space, but are they also partners in life? All right. Yeah, two men and they have two kids together. And when he introduces every episode, he's like, you know, so and so and I and our what do they call them? Replicants. And our replicants traveled, you know, to find life somewhere else. Um, it's like, are they their kids or what's going on? How's it work? Right. Is it something different? Because I, I thought the the second dude was like more like a young adult, you know, like teenage or like college, you know age right so like i said i don't want to give it away but they definitely toy with that idea and they, they'll lead you one way where you think oh they're definitely not a couple because you'll see them with like other people and then they'll come back where you say wait a second that's so something only a couple would do right. and so they're aliens i think the main thing is that as human beings we think about what couples are and it's kind of an interesting way to like show that these these characters care about each other and maybe or maybe they're not they're not a couple but i, I right. thought that was kind of a fun little like side, you know, below line thing that they do throughout the episodes. It's like, you can't label them with earth labels, you know? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. And it was, it's great. Did you know that um, the voice of the, um, the other main guy, not the one that's provided by Justin Rowland yeah, is yeah. The, the main dude from Silicon Valley. Which one? So his the, the buddy, nerdy dude? Oh. So yeah, yeah, you got the, the main the dude. Oh, okay. okay. There's two main. There's four characters, right? You have the right. two adult men. The one adult man that's the scientist is the the Rick sounding one is Justin yeah. Rowland. The other one is the guy from um, Silicon Valley. The main right, okay. guy from Silicon Valley. Okay. And then the son is um, the kid from uh, Goldberg's. He's Adam Goldberg on the Goldberg's. Right. But I don't know who the female is. She's some sort of comedian. Yeah. Do you think there's gonna be like a crossover? Oh, I don't know. Like, I've, I actually did a little research to see because part of me wondered if, because uh, I think it's pretty well known that Dan Harmon is a creative genius, but part of that is he's kind of a dick bag. Like, he got kicked off his own show. Like, he created community, ran community until he got into a huge fight, and they actually fired him from his own show because he's such a dick bag. And so uh, I wonder, like, if he has any issue with Justin Rowland doing this show with another person that's not him or if he cares right. at all. So uh, I don't know if that means there could be a crossover or not a crossover, but that'd be pretty cool if they did. In fact, I was watching the last episode of Rick and Morty and they had a character that was very similar looking to one that was in Solar Opposites, um, Fun Buckets. I can't remember. You, you've only seen the first episode, so you haven't got to the Fun Buckets episode, which is also an amazing episode. Wait, or was that the first episode? It was Fun Bucket. The one, the one kids fun bucket the first of, yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah, so yeah. um yeah fun bucket there's a character in the last rick and morty because i'm all caught up on rick and morty too because they just release new episodes as we speak at right. rick and morty once a week um there was a character on this episode with a train that looked very similar to fun bucket so i don't know if it just happenstance or what but i mean justin Rowland is the main art director behind all of it too not only is he the voices but he's the art director right that's why it looks so um similar yeah, exactly. He, like, the one thing that is definitely a Justin Rowland thing is that um, the pupils of the eyes are like scribbly dots. They're never like perfect yeah. circular dots. I've Just always like, kind of liked that. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Well, that's cool. Uh, anything else? Um, I think that's it. I'm just trying to finish my shows and not start new ones and not finish my other shows. <laughs> that's my new thing I'm trying to do. No, that's, that's good. I, I've still been watching through the Star Wars groupings. I watched, um, I just today watched New Hope. So I've watched Rogue One. Obviously, I finished Clone Wars a while ago. So I've been watching Star Wars. What else have we been watching? We watched, um, I've been watching a lot more What We Do in the Shadows. And man, I, I like that show more and more every episode. So I still really highly recommend What We Do in Shadows, which is on FX and Hulu. Um... What else have we been watching? We finished Too Hot to Handle. So I know what happened there finally. <laughs> oh, is that uh, the dating one on Netflix? That dumb, yeah, dating reality show where they at the end decided who got money, who didn't get money. Did you did you watch where they all got together and they like, talked about it? The reunion? No, I haven't seen the reunion yet. Uh -huh. um, I'm just trying to think of what else we've been even wasting our time on. I think that was mostly it. I watched a new movie 
And I just, because the trailer would make it look pretty good. So over on Amazon Prime, I watched a movie called Honey Boy. Have you, have you seen that trailer? No. So apparently this was like a, an indie movie that got really like good reviews, like rave reviews. And it was the um, director, or the writing debut. The screenplay was written by Shia LaBeouf, or LaBeouf, how do you say his name? Shia LaBeouf. LaBeouf. Whatever, you know, that crazy know. kid from yeah. Transformers and the bad in Indiana Jones. So uh, Shia apparently is um, part of his real life rehab because um, he had a bad uh, either alcohol or drug addiction. And he had to go to rehab because he got all crazy there. Um, one of his things he had to do as part of his therapy was um, create something artistic. And so he wrote this screenplay while he was in uh, rehab. And basically, Honey Boy is about Shia LaBeouf and how he is. And it's, it's really well done. I was so shocked because um, he thought maybe it would be like almost a puff piece kind of explaining why he's such a nut house. Maybe he had this horrible life and he definitely did not have a good life. But I thought he did a really good job. It's, um, it's not too over the top. It's, a, if you're into, it's only an hour and a half long, so it's a short movie. Um, but if you're into something, if you're feeling like watching something a little bit more dramatic, it's pretty good. So basically he casts himself as his own dad. So he plays the dad in the movie, um, his own dad. And we learned that Shia LaBeouf, when he was a kid, his parents were total disasters of human beings and his mom kind of left to do whatever. And he was living with his dad in a crappy, um, like motel. And his dad was a failed rodeo clown. But he was a real dick bag because he was a former alcoholic and he was kind of um, still using drugs on the side. And so uh, Shy was paying his dad to basically over be his, his uh, uh, child keeper as he went to like movie sets and did stuff. And so it starts off with him being really young doing like movies and TV shows. And his dad's kind of like his chaperone. And his, he treats his dad pretty badly because in his mind, he's paying him to work for him basically. And his dad's right. a loser. And in turn, his dad's a real jerk and is real mean to him. And they live across from this one other people that live in the motel. And it's um, uh, FKA Twigs or whatever her name is, you know, the singer. I think it's FKA Twigs. But she's, she did pretty good. She plays a character called Shy Girl. And she literally just introduced herself as Shy Girl. But the movie is well done. Like, so it's not funny, really. But if you're into like a well done short drama type movie, I liked it. So I enjoyed is, it. So is it tr all that stuff true? Or is that just made up? No, supposedly it's a hundred percent true story. So he changes the names. Like he doesn't call the kid Shia. He calls him Otis and he doesn't have him work on any movies. You'd be like, Oh, it's holes. Cause you know, we all remember Shia. One of Shia's first big movies was holes and he did right. a bunch of other Disney things. I think he probably did that to avoid any copyright issues. So, but supposedly the story otherwise is 100% um, based on his reality. And it does something smart where it jumps between Shia when he's in rehab and then cuts back to when Shia when he's first starting when he's like 12. And so you, they keep cutting between the two. So you see adult Shia like learning how to like control his emotions and not be such a bad human being anymore. And so I thought it was really good. He, and as far as acting goes, he did a great job portraying his own father, even though I don't know his father. I mean, just the character. What was right. kind of cool is because it's 100% based on his real life. The credits, we had like a good credits I sat all the way through because it showed real photographs of him and his rodeo clown dad and all this stuff. And it was like, wow, it seems so weird. I didn't think that part was real, but it was. Does it, does it give you like sympathy for him though? It does. So yeah, you feel, you feel like, I don't know if the sympathy is the right word, but it definitely lets you understand because how many of us have all laughed at Shia LaBeouf doing like his weird like, oh, we need to all get, you know, whatever it is he does. Just do it. Yeah, that just do it thing. Yeah, where he's acting yeah. all crazy. And you're like, we all just enjoy laughing. I'm like, this idiot just went crazy. But then you, I think even more than him specifically, it maybe opens your eyes as a viewer to like child actors and how it like, kind of screws them all up. Because right. um, he came from nothing and became pretty well to do. And his dad resented him for it because his dad wanted to be the one that was famous. And it was, yeah, it, it gives you a little sympathy for him. Did it show like, even Stevens? No, like it definitely shows him doing stuff like that, but it never right. calls things out by name. And I think that's <laughs> probably, it was purposeful. But yeah, so Honey Boy is, uh, I think it was either like an SWSX movie or maybe like um, 
oh, what's that one they do in Paris, that other like film festival? It was a film festival movie and it's got really high reviews. I think it's 97% uh, positive on Rotten Tomatoes. And it's one of those ones that uh, Amazon buys up those kind of movies and puts them on there. Like The Lighthouse, I think that might be one I might watch next with uh, Twilight Boy, isn't it? The Batman? Yeah, it's uh, black and white. It's supposed to be creepy yeah, yeah. as hell. I haven't seen it yet, but maybe. But uh, yeah, so it's I watched it mostly because it was short and easy, and I enjoyed it. I didn't liking it. So um, anybody wants to see kind of a well done movie and has any interest on why uh, Shia LaBeouf is an a hole, this kind of tells you. Oh, dude! Speaking of movies, yeah, I forgot to tell you, I I watched um, Snowpiercer. Oh, and yeah, it was actually really good. Told you, super good. Yeah, I think that uh, is it. This weekend or the beginning of next week, the TV show debuts. Yeah, I see that advertising me everywhere now since after I watched the movie. Yeah, I get advertised my, my, a lot. You go through my Twitter feed, I'm like, oh, there it is, TNT. Yeah, I think uh, I really like that movie. I, I was shocked that I'd gone so long without seeing it because it, it is a good movie. Honestly, people might hate me for this, but I liked it more than Parasite. Oh, really? I still haven't yeah. seen Parasite. That, yeah. that, that, I like that. I'll have to tell you if that's a hot take or not because I don't know. Because, like, for me, you know how you're saying that if you take out the whole like, metaphor out, right. out of the picture, yeah. I feel like people are just like, oh, I get the metaphor. I'm so smart, you know, Zuni? Right. Take, that out. <laughs> take that out of the picture. Parasite, it's not that. It's There's not nothing that good really movie. going on otherwise. Yeah. But this one is like, you know, action packed, and you're like, you just kind of guessing throughout the, the movie. You right. Know? It's a good time, and it still has the same metaphor. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's cool. That's awesome. You know what movie I watched? Um, over on Netflix, I finally got around to watching Extraction. Didn't you say you saw that? Oh, yeah. Bish, bish. I watched it in uh, two chunks. That was a long movie. So I don't understand how a smart movie like Honey Boy is only an hour and a half in a goddamn puncher movie. Like, I mean, Extraction is the equivalent of a button smasher in like a video game. You know, like, you're just like yeah. ah, smashing the buttons yeah. like crazy. Um, but it was over two hours long of him smashing yeah. the button. People love Thor, man. And I was watching it in my upstairs TV. So I, I basically, this was my folding laundry watchable. And so I only watched this movie while I was folding laundry. Luckily, we had a lot of laundry over a couple of days. But we're all caught up now. But uh, yeah, I would watch it in the upstairs TV. The audio is kind of weird. So whenever they're just like talking, he was like trying to be intense. He's having an intense conversation with like the Stranger Things guy. Yeah, I could barely hear it. So I'd crank it up. And then all of a sudden, I'd cut to them fighting. Like, boo, 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 and the, the yeah. punches and the explosions were so loud. Like, their, their sound guy was all over the board with that thing. Dude, their cinematics were, were freaking crazy, though. You Dude, remember that car? Movie. Great Did, looking You remember movie. the car scene? Yeah. Was it, they're getting chased, and then the camera goes, and then, like, go, shows you the car. And all of a sudden, it goes in and goes into the car. And you see, yeah. like, Thor's face looking. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. Yeah, the movie was really well done. It was, I guess, we talked a little bit about last time we were talking about the fact that it was based on a comic that it was filmed by a former stuntman, stunt coordinator, and this was his directorial debut. And I think he's got a career in front of him if he could get a more fully developed script. Because, yeah, the movies, yeah. Uh, it's no John Wick. I think John Wick does it better, but it's fun to I watch. So. I mean, it's yeah. crazy. I like the last, I think it lasts 40 minutes of it more than I like the setup because I felt like the setup was kind of long-winded. A little slow. Yeah, but it was a good time. And then, uh, no spoiler alerts, but that very last scene, right before the credits, I was like, wait, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and I had to pause it and rewind it. Yeah. I'm like, hold on. So that was kind of interesting. I think um, my favorite part of the movie was when he was fighting the kids. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. Dude, my was my so son funny. walked in. Yeah, Kid Danger walked oh, in right gosh. when that was happening. I'm like, whoa, Thor's kicking these kids' asses. <laughs> He's just like bitch slapping everybody. Bah, bah. <laughs> He's like trying to be nice and they're all trying to kill him. Yeah. yeah that was that that part was pretty good. So it definitely had moments. Like I said, I felt like the setup was a little slow. I liked the the moment when he battled uh Stranger Things guy. I liked the kid fight scene. I liked the car scene at the beginning. That was a great setup. Yeah. And then I yeah. really liked the last bit, the actual where they got the word extraction from, where they're trying to finish the extraction at the end. Right. I enjoyed that too. Yeah. Well, like the action parts of that movie was really, really good. I enjoyed yeah, all the good. action parts. Yeah. yeah and that's so what it's for, you know, that yeah. storyline. You're just like, who cares, you know, yeah. badass Thor fighting people. Yeah. So I would recommend that movie to anybody who is, is looking for a good time of a bunch of punching. 
just knowing that there is a couple slow parts, but otherwise it is like really well. It, you know what it reminded me of for a lot of that movie is I kept thinking, this is the movie they show people that want to be stuntmen. They're like, oh, so you want to be a stuntman. Welcome to our stuntman training course. And then they just show these guys kicking each other's asses all over the place. Dude, you know the, the director, stuntman director? Yeah. Was the sniper guy. Really? Yeah, it's him. With the beard? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's good to know. I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah, no, so yeah, good movie. It was, I liked it okay. Since we're on Netflix, um, I have a couple um, Netflix upcoming things I've read about. Um, I think since, well, actually, I want to talk about this first. Uh, I watched a brand new thing actually today on Netflix. Um, did you see that they released a new Kimmy Schmidt episode? Or it's actually a movie. Wait. Oh, crap. I'm never, I never finished that show. <laughs> oh, you never finished Kimmy Schmidt? I'm like half halfway through the the last part season? of season. Yeah. Yeah. You should finish it. So they just released a brand new Kimmy Schmidt movie and it's called The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt uh Kimmy versus the Reverend. And the best part about this is it's an interact interactive movie kind of like that um Black Mirror Bandersnitch or Snatch or whatever the hell it was called. So um I watched that today and it takes a while to watch because I've never, this is the first time I never did any of the other interactive stuff they've made. I know they've done this a couple times now. This right. is the first one that I've ever actually watched. And it's so fun. I was cracking up. First of all, it's they, the Kimmy Schmidt stuff because it's still not, it hasn't been off the air that long, maybe a, little, a year or so. Um, it still seems just like it was added on. So it doesn't seem like weird. So the Kimmy Schmidt people are all still very Kimmy schmidt And it was super, super funny. So I really recommend it. But I had so much fun picking my adventure. So this makes me excited for that Ryan Reynolds thing that he's getting ready to do with the choose your own adventure thing. Because I'd never realized how well it works. So as the scene was progressing, it would pop up a thing below and it would give me between two and four choices. And as they're talking, I would choose which way I wanted it to go. And it was so flawless. Like you couldn't really even tell where they cut it to know which direction it was going to go. Yeah, when I watched the first one you mentioned... I'm always thinking, man, they got to film this so many ways just for you to choose. <laughs> yeah. And so I think I did a pretty good job. But in the end, um, so I, I watched it in the first few things. And the, I chose my choice and the movie just kept going along. No weirdness. But the, as I was getting towards the middle, they must not like the choices I was choosing. Because I would choose choices where either the movie ended up concluding right then. And they'd be like, this is too soon for the movie to be over. And it'd, go, blah, 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 blah. And it would like reverse back to that yeah. part and let me choose again. Like, like I needed, I, I chose poorly. And then there was a couple of times where I, I chose and they would just basically uh, like, oh, you killed this character. And they it rewind. So I'd start again. So I didn't accidentally kill somebody. Yeah, it so, happened in the other one too, like that. Did it? To where, to where if it, your character dies, it yeah. rewinds back to like a certain spot for you to choose again. Yeah, yeah so um, there's this one part where you get to basically, um, Kimmy has an interaction with the Reverend. And you get to choose what violent thing she does to him. And there's four choices, right? So uh, choice one is she happens to have a gun, right? So it says, shoot him. And the next one says, stomp him. And the third one says, be Kimmy and let him go. And then the fourth one says, explode him. So first I pick explode him because I'm like, what the hell does that mean? And she pulls like a rocket launcher out of nowhere. <laughs> he's hell? like, where did you even get that? And he, she blows him up. And then I kept choosing the versions to kill him. And finally, after I killed him the third time, it like somehow the program knew that I picked all three of the wrong choices because they said, how dare you be so sadistic and kill me all three times, you know, which I thought was really funny that it not only interacted with me each time I did something wrong, but it knew when I did multiple things wrong. It, it said that too. Yeah. So I highly recommend if you get to that, you'll, you'll know the point, choose all four ways to kill or all three ways to kill him before you let her do the other thing. So you can see it. Cause it just reverses you back yeah. to the beginning anyways. But then at the very end, I got to the end of the movie and they, they finish and they look right at me and they said, well, you did pretty good. I'd give it an A minus, but you can do better. And then it pops up and says restart. And it lets you restart the whole movie and try again. Yeah. So it's I thought like that playing, was so fun. It's almost like playing a game while yeah, you're watching was, her. Yeah. It was so fun. Like I'm, Now I want to go back and try some of the other interactive things they've made because I didn't realize that it would be that well done. So I highly recommend pretty much any recommend uh, any other interactive stuff, I guess. But uh, if you have been watching Kimmy Schmidt, I wouldn't watch this if you haven't seen any of the other Kimmy Schmidt stuff because 
yeah. it's very heavily reliant on you understanding the story and where they're at in the story. So like even you, if you started today, you'd be like, what the hell? When did this happen? So you got to make sure you get to the end first. I wonder if Netflix has a whole like category that says interaction or they should. interactive, you know? Yeah, I'm into it. So I, I definitely want to try some more because I, I, I totally dug it. I really liked it. Um, but anyways, what I was going to say before I start talking about Kimmy Schmidt is that Netflix, uh, as we know, had their Marvel rug ripped out from underneath them. And they can't make any Marvel superhero stuff anymore. But uh, they've definitely liked the idea of producing comics into uh, movies and TV shows because we've yeah. seen a ton of that from, you know, Extraction to Umbrella Umbrella to Lock and Key. And so um, they have two new ones coming out that I'm actually very excited about. They're both based on comics. Nice. The first one is called Sweet Tooth. Have you ever heard of the comic Sweet Tooth? No. So Are these Sweet more like in, indie comics? Well, this one is, so this Sweet Tooth is actually made as by DC, but it's part of their Vertigo imprint. So wow. I think that makes it uh, more indie because the Vertigo was basically DC's version of indie. But what's kind of cool about this is Sweet Tooth is being produced by the one and only Robert Downey Jr. Cool. Yeah, so he stepped away from Marvel and is working with DC, a traitor. But... Uh, so uh, Sweet Tooth, the concept is fairly simple. Um, I think I have it right here. It says that, hold on. Oh, wait, that's interesting. He's making it with his wife. My page is having a hard time loading. Hold on. You can't get Marvel. We'll get the face of Marvel. <laughs> exactly. So Sweet Tooth follows uh, a character named Gus, who is a boy who is part deer. Um, who leaves his home in the forest to discover a brand new world. He ends up joining a makeshift family of other animal children to kind of make sense of his existence. And the artwork for the comic looks really cool. I've never read it. I'm thinking about maybe buying maybe the graphic novel on Amazon. But uh, it's like, obviously, this kid with deer horns. Um, they're going to be uh, eight one-hour episodes and they star uh, unfortunately robert downey jr is only the producer he's not actually in the show right but the show um stars hold on where is it i had it written down is that um last man on earth yes so it stars christian convery not non so on zoe and the one and only uh will forte it's also oh, yeah. narrated by james brolin a bunch of marvel stuff huh yeah so thanos himself yeah but uh yeah so i mean i think it looks pretty interesting i'm excited to see kind of how it turns out what it looks like um i don't know can't be since this is only the second thing robert downey jr has been involved with outside of marvel and it can't be any worse than dr doolittle so um i'm down for it to see what how it turns out <laughs> Dude, they should they should do like a, a parody version of you remember when The Rock was doing SNL and he yeah. made like a, a Bambi movie? And he oh. was Bambi. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Dude, that's we, should, it right we should pull that, that still and post it. We got the first images of Sweet Tooth and then yeah. tag Robert Downey Jr. and The Rock. Yeah. All right. Just I'm on slap it. that logo on it. Pop. Yeah, yeah. I'm on it. That's genius. Yeah. So genius. So uh, also on Netflix, uh, Another comic that they're converting over is one called The Old Guard. Have you ever heard of this one? No, man. So I'm it, like you. I'm not a comic guy. <laughs> right. I'm your, your comic your comic guy. So uh, The Old Guard, though, is made by Image Comics. And as we've spoken about in the past, Image Comics is actually based out of Portland, Oregon. And I'm like really excited about that because the guy that created this, um, I wonder if I still have it written down. His name is... Gus, is his name Gus too, or is that just the name of the deer guy? Now I'm confused. I forget his name. But the um, the writer of um, this comic book, The Old Guard, is actually a uh, Portland native. He lives in Portland. So oh. I'm wondering if we promote it enough, if we can maybe get him on the podcast and talk to him. He's originally from Eugene. He lives in Portland. He works for Image. He also made um, Stumptown. He's the guy that created Stumptown. So you know that TV show on ABC? Yeah. That's him. And so The Old Guard stars Charlize Theron, the one and the only beautiful Charlize uh, Theron. She is gorgeous. 
right? And so the old guard is basically a group of mercenaries who happen to be immortal. And so everything's, you know, pretty copacetic as they run through their mercenary life because they can't, you know, die until one day, and this is after they've been living apparently forever, they run into another group that has similar abilities. And that's kind of like the synopsis of the old guard. But it looks pretty good. There's some still shots already of it. I don't think there's a trailer. There's like a, like a teaser, a tiny teaser that shows like all the things that they've been involved in. But how exciting is that to get an image comic on Netflix starring Charlize Theron acting as a yeah. badass? Because she's one of those females that does badass pretty good. Yeah, because she was Atomic Blonde, remember? Yeah, and she yeah. kicked ass in Mad Max. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I, yeah, she... I, I, I buy her as an ass kicker. I think she's one of my top fives. You'd let her kick your ass. Yeah, all day. Yeah. Tie me up, kick my ass, Charlize, let's go. <laughs> you know, she's South African. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Fun fact. So um, the old guard premieres fairly soon, which is even better, assuming the date stays the same. I mean, I'm always afraid to give dates anymore. But... So the, the story goes, the, new, the old guard meets the new guard, and they met their match. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, you've pretty much summed it up in a sentence. Yeah. Be, if we managed to talk this guy into coming on our podcast, let's not simplify it so much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, supposedly this bad boy comes out on uh, July 10th on Netflix. And uh, I'm excited. Between that and Sweet Tooth, it sounds like there's some really good comic booky stuff coming out on right. those channels. But that's, that's what you always want, right? Get those like indie comics into, onto screen. Oh my God, we've, t yeah. how long have we been talking about that? You and I online, offline have been talking literally for years about how it's so obvious to, it seems like everybody, but the movie studios until recently that yeah. there was this cornucopia of pure gold. Cause for the longest time, we just kept getting like repeats and reruns Remakes. and yeah. part twos and part twelves of stuff. It's like, there's so much good content already storyboarded out. And so I'm, I'm happy to see that they finally figured it out, even though I wish somehow I'd managed to make money from it. That would have been even better. Right. Freaking Netflix. It had to take Marvel, like, taking Marvel out of Netflix for them to realize that, man. But they have, and that's good. And if any of these are successful, more people will do it because they're kind of the yeah. leader in all this. Yeah. Um, over on Disney+, Plus, uh, I, I saw a bunch of good stuff about Mandalorian Season 2. And we talked a little bit about the fact that we're real excited that they are introducing Ahsoka um, in Season 2, played by the, the one and only Rosario Dawson, which I think is incredible casting. Yeah. But um, since we've talked about it, and I checked to make sure that we didn't actually talk about this last episode, because I think it happened right after our episode. Probably, if I had 10 people are listening to the other episode, they may have already known this news. But um, they've also added Boba Fett. And I am so pumped. Because Boba Fett is being played by the same dude that played Django Fett in the uh, prequels. Yeah. I mean, he's a clone, cool. dude. It's perfect. Yeah. It's so perfect. So uh, his name is Timura Morrison, and he gets to play Boba Fett. I'm not sure how many episodes he's actually been in. But now we've got uh, Ahsoka, and we've got Boba. They announced another one. But wait, there's more. And so for anybody who hasn't watched Rebels yet, you're going to want to hop on the Rebels bandwagon before season two of The Mandalorian comes in because they're basically casting everybody from Rebels. So we're going to see the cartoon versions come to life. And they're taking a character named Bo-Katan. And she gets to be – and she Bo-Katan in Rebels is a, a badass Mandalorian chick. And I think she's in Clone Wars too. And she's a, like the sword wielder. So I'm hoping that she's going to take that sword back from Moff Gideon and the coolest part about this is they've hired the actual voice actress that played Bo-Katan on the cartoons to play the part in the show because she's a buff-ass chick that looks just like the character. Oh, yeah. I've seen that because she's, she, she does, she's done a lot of like shows and movies too. Yeah, she's a real actress. Yeah. So how cool is that? But last and not least, they're bringing in another character from Rebels. She Freddy was Prince? it'd <laughs> uh, be hilarious to see Freddie Prince get some work <laughs> um, they're bringing the, the, the pilot the one and only pilot of the ghost which is the spaceship that they fly on Rebels uh, Hera Syndulla 
And they haven't, I haven't heard who they've cast to play her character yet, but she's one of these ones that has like the weird green snaky looking things come on off the tops of their heads. Oh yeah. 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 So she's pretty cool too. So we're getting a whole bunch of characters, uh, Hera, Boba, Bo-Katan and Ahsoka. Um, and I'm wondering if it's going to be like one episode, two episodes or the whole season, but uh, I'm geeked out. I saw some people were a little skeptical. They were like, Oh, they're just doing fan service. But, isn't that kind of yeah. what Star Wars partly is? I mean, it's, it, <laughs> yeah, they have this interconnectivity that's super cool. So it doesn't hurt my feelings at all. It's like, dude, why not fan service? You, like, you're catering to your fans. Get yeah, this it, it makes, yeah, it makes, <laughs> makes perfect sense to me. So I don't understand why anybody would complain about that. What if, like, Mando's like, yo, I need to go, I need to get a team, <laughs> you know? And he, like, starts recruiting everybody to be on his team to go that fight Moff Gideon. Cool. Well, I, yeah, they fight off Moff Gideon or like deliver Baby Yoda wherever the hell Baby Yoda's yeah. supposed to go. So yeah, I'm hoping it's something like that. But they can't, I, they can't make Bobo a good guy because he's proven to be a d bag. So hopefully, like maybe Bo, uh, Moff Gideon brings out Boba on his side. He hires them or something. We still need to learn how the hell Boba survived getting eaten by the Tremors worm. So rocket goes up. Yeah. I mean, I've always, even as a kid, I just assumed right. that's what had happened. People were like, right. "Oh, they're gonna bring back Boba Fett." I'm like, "Homies." They brought back multiple characters that have been chopped in half. We never even saw this guy die. We saw him fall into the mouth of something. Yeah. So. You got um, Palpatine himself came back. What the hell, dude? Yeah. I mean, Star Wars is not afraid to bring people back. Yeah. Darth Maul came back. <laughs> hell, even freaking Anakin Skywalker was chopped and burnt to a crisp, and he was just like, I'm good. No worries. So, people need to relax. Relax. Uh, my last in the last uh, note in the healthy stream is over on HBO Max. I don't know if you've been seeing their promo. They've been promoting that hard. Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming to HBO Max, um, including um, a new show by the guy that created the regular show. Do you remember the regular show? Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. So it looks exactly the same because once again, he's another one of these artists where his style is very obvious. You definitely right. recognize it. It's called Close Enough, and it's by J.G. Quintel, the guy that created um, Regular Show. And it looks pretty cool. <clears throat> it actually debuts on July 9th, because I think HBO Max starts, I want to say, May 27th. I've been getting a lot of promotions uh, to buy it for $11.99 a month versus the $14.99 a month that it normally is. Um, I don't know. I, I think I want HBO Max. It looks like it's going to come out with a lot of solid content, like right out the yeah. gate. It's a little bit more spendy, but I've paid the 15 bucks a month in the past for just HBO. So um, maybe- For one show. <laughs> yeah, just so I can watch Game of- Right, all of us. Yeah. Who, raise your hand if you paid $15 a month to watch Game of Thrones. I mean, everybody was doing that. Oh, I, I gotta tell you, there was a funny joke and I don't feel bad about giving it away because it was so funny, you'll forget it by the time you get to it. <clears throat> As you know, on Kimmy Schmidt, uh, she has the other mole women that live in the, um, the cellar thing with her. Yeah. And one of them, I can't remember her name, but the really dumb one that wears braces for some reason still is an has, a, has a cult. Yes. It has the cult. Yeah. Her. Yeah, yeah. So she, later on, she's talking about, um, like she's having a hard time getting jobs, but she got a job. She goes, I got a job. She goes, no one ever listens to anything. She goes, I'm just so excited to be part of a plan. No one listens to anything I said except for my last job that I got working for Game of Thrones. They let me write the whole last season. <laughs> it was so good. I'm like, oh my God, such a burn. Take that, Game of Thrones. A burn. A burn. A burn. So, um, that's funny. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, that was a solid joke. And you'll forget about yeah. it by the time you get to that and you'll get a laugh all over again. So, I think it's a perfect opportunity to take a quick bite, a quick break. Uh, on the opposing side, I don't have as many news GQ stories as usual, so the second half will be uh, a little bit shorter. But uh, I've got a, a tasty trailer news. Uh, I do have um, some Disney Plus news for a new thing that they're doing. Uh, we're going to talk about how porn is going to save the movie industry. Uh, nice. A little thing called the Peacock. And uh, could Jeff Bezos become the first ever trillionaire? Uh, we'll catch you on the flippity flip. And we're back. Um, I want to first dip our toes into this bubbling up news jacuz. Um, with a story about how the porn industry 
bow chicka wow wow my favorite going, topic <laughs> is going to uh help uh, usher in the new era of just tinsel town in general uh regular hollywood movies um there's obviously because of covid19 there's been a lot of talk about how they're going to film movies we're probably going to have a weird dead period uh when things that have already been made are done you know done been put out because we'll have to wait for all this new content to be produced right yeah and so um they're talking about how are they going to uh, make sure that they keep everybody healthy and safe just like any in any in industry and as it turns out uh, the porn industry has already been through this to some degree not exactly the same but uh if you if everybody remembers the uh aids hiv thing was a huge deal uh, that ran rampant in the porn industry and it really kind of um, defined what they had to do as far as testing and running all these different things and so hollywood honestly could learn a thing or two from the porn industry when it comes to protecting their film crews from this kind of health scare that we got going on uh, as tinseltown gears up to restart production in the wake of the coronavirus uh, it could turn to its freaky cousin the adult entertainment industry for their battle tested solutions um, nice the, the, the porn guy says when we first or the COVID guy says when we first start talking about uh, COVID, we felt very well prepared because we have a whole industry of testing as well as contact tracing and production shutdowns. Uh, the Trade Association for the Adult U.S. Entertainment said uh, this is obviously a different type of virus with a different type of threat. But we understand now in general how it would work and what we need to do in order to protect ourselves. The protocols, including rigorous testing and databases that list who is clean and available, available for work, which was established in the 1990s after a porn actor faked an HIV test so he could perform and ended up giving a whole bunch of people AIDS, um, helps them do this. So they're going to create something similar, almost like a database to let people know maybe who's had the coronavirus, who's been tested for it, who's tested clean recently. Yeah. Uh, this, is the, this is the best part of the story. Um, porn star Sharon Michelle, who is now a physician. Now, I just want to what? take a, I just want to take a second for it and talk about this particular moment in this article. Porn star a- <laughs> Sharon Michelle, who is now a physician. That just that line alone just is so crazy. How often, when I was 14 years old, did I want to go to the doctor and have the doctor say, "It's time for your physical, Eric." I'm going to need you to drop your pants. And then just like brown chicken, brown cow, you know, that would just kick in and we would be like, it would be like epic, right? She had to pay for her bills somehow, man. This is incredible. This is like, I'm just like, they just kind of gloss past this part. Like it's just every porn star becomes a a, a physician after time. Like a real one? Not just on screen? Not just like, she doesn't just play one on TV. She's a real physician. This is almost like the opposite of Kim Jong becoming a Median after being a physician. Wait, what's so, your name? Need, I'm a I'm a visual learner, so I need a visual. Okay, so it's I've been saying it's Sharon Michelle, but maybe it's Sharon Mitchell. So it's Sharon, then Mitchell, M I T C H E L L. Sharon Mitchell, who is now Sharon a physician, Mitchell. created a system known as PASS for it stands for Performer Availability Scheduling Services. That requires sex actors to be tested for sexually transmitted diseases every 14 days. And honestly, this sounds pretty good. We're talking about a two-week system, right? Not everything we've ever heard about coronavirus testing. Uh, The results are then entered into a database that tells producers and directors who is clean and available for work. So I can totally see this system like being adapted and working. So honestly, I'm excited to say that porn star Sharon Mitchell is going to keep us watching our favorite Marvel movies probably. Um, good stuff Sharon yeah it's like thanks Sharon I mean you really saved the day and then the story just goes on and on talk talk about how well the system has actually worked for them but uh, and I'm still shocked that they just glossed over the fact that the physician used to be a porn star (laughs) but uh, that's such a good story I mean um, it's both amazing and erotic at once so my next story Go ahead. You, you saying Sharon, it reminded me of Shannon. And yeah. I forgot, I finished Kim's Convenience senior season four. Oh, so you're all caught up. Yeah. So you, good. You love it all the way through? Yeah. Yeah. It's such a great show. I, I really liked it as well, all the way through. I'm I can't hoping. wait for season five. Are they, are they already doing it or they're still in production? 
Yeah, I think honestly it may even be recorded because it's a Canadian thing. So um, Kim's Convenience, like a lot of the Canadian shows, runs on a Canadian channel first, which I, yeah. if I could get a good VPN, I could probably hack that channel and convince it that I'm in Canada. But uh, it may have already even been on. Um, my next story is about Percy Jackson. You know, we, I think we've even talked about Percy Jackson on this show a little bit, but they finally uh, finalized the deal where they're making Percy Jackson as a television show for Disney Plus. And so I'm super excited about this. I know a lot of people out there are like, Disney ruins everything. And I'm like, go cry no me a river. Zippity doo fuck. Nobody cares. Um, Percy Jackson, I thought the movies were fine. They were okay. I mean, but it's a solid group of books. It's a good story. Yeah. And so what they're going to do, what they're um, producing is um, it will be each book will be its own season of television, which is really probably the best way to do it. So I'm not sure, excuse me, how many Percy Jackson books there are in total, but every one of them will be its own, um, its own season of television, which is pretty cool because I feel like Disney Plus is one of those channels that has quite a big budget for their shows. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. So people can look forward to seeing a new version of Percy Jackson. I honestly think will be probably pretty good. I think I always thought those movies will be better off as a show anyways. Because you, you need more time to build up everything, you know. Agreed. And that's exactly why this is going to work, I think. Unless, of course, it doesn't. <laughs> they, should, they, should, they should rehire Percy Jackson, the actor that played him in the movie. Is he too old though now? Oh, to be, you know, to be yeah, to be something else in the in that show. Yeah, no, I'd be down because I think Percy Jackson originally was produced by Fox, and that's why they own the rights to it now, which is one of those right. kind of cool things that came over in that big Disney Fox merger. Yeah. Um, my second piece of uh, television news is the Peacock Network is gearing up where they're getting closer. I think they launch in um, July, July fifteenth, actually, um, and they have started like releasing some of their content. Originally, I assumed that it was going to be kind of like what CBS did. You know, CBS has their own streaming channel and it's basically all the stuff that's ever been on CBS plus like one or two originals. But Peacock's going more original than I would have ever guessed. And I kind of got excited because they've got a David Schwimmer. And those of you who know, David Schwimmer is Ross from Friends and he's producing a comedy um, that's going to be ready on launch day, which is, like I said, July 15th. Um, and what's kind of cool about the Peacock is it's cheap. You know, we just talked about HBO Max costing a whopping 15 bucks a month once you get past all the promo pricing. Uh, the Peacock is only $4.99 per month if you do the one with ads. If you decide, I can't handle ads, and you do the $9.99 per month one. But honestly, I've been signing up for anything that has, like, as far as these streaming networks, I usually pick the ad one because I use the time when they pop up the couple ads to like stare at Twitter or something. I use it for my social right. media time. So it doesn't hurt my feelings at all. It helps me multitask. It's like a little break. Yeah. A break so anybody who's like feeling like they can't like afford it, go with the cheaper one. There's easy times to fill that time because it's never as long as like a real commercial break, honestly. Like I have the cheap Hulu and whenever we, because we watch uh, what we do in the shadows on that, every time a commercial pops up, I'm just on Twitter like messing around for a second. It seems like it's not fast enough half the time. I almost wish the break was longer, but uh, um, yeah, they're going to have all sorts of new shows on this thing. This David Schwimmer show is called Intelligence, and it's a workplace comedy, which is my favorite, uh, that's set at the UK's government communication headquarters. It's kind of a weirder, geekier, uh, more bureaucratic version of M15 or M16 like we've seen in like the Mission Impossible movies. Um, so David, it stars David Schwimmer. Is kind of I almost imagine this being the equivalent of space force like that's what i'm seeing in my head where david schwimmer is the steve carell character like where everything's going crazy but this time it's uh united kingdom like you know spy stuff versus his space stuff so uh i'm pretty excited about it um there's also a show called brave new world that's a from the novel the same name about a utopian society because we don't really have enough shows about utopian societies i've never really seen that so i'm excited for that um there's a thing that's coming from the guy that stars. Um, oh, that, that one stars Harry Lloyd. He says he's from Game of Thrones, but I don't recognize the name. I'm not sure which character he played. There's another show Harry called Lloyd? Harry Lloyd. You want to look up Harry Lloyd and tell us which character he is? Because he's the star of Brave New World. There's another show called um, The Capture. 
And The Capture is a conspiracy thr- thriller that looks at uh, a troubling world of fake news. Oh my God, where did they get <laughs> that concept from? Um, and the extraordinary capabilities of the intelligent services. Uh, this stars Calum Turner. Never heard of him. Holiday Granger. So only it stars people with weird names. Oh, Ron Perlman. I know him. He's Hellboy. Uh, Fam K. Jensen. I know her from the old X Men stuff. Who else? Anybody else good? Paul Ritter. It sounds familiar, but I'm not sure. Um, they also have some original movies, which I'm excited about. The Peacock's first original movie is going to be Psych, the movie. Lassie comes home. So if any of you psych nerds out there like me, I was a big fan of psych. Did you ever watch right. psych, Ren? No, I never really watched it. It's good. I recommend it. So if you're ever like insanely bored, psych is a great repeat. I'm sure you can find it on maybe Hulu or something. But they're making a, a, a brand new movie with all the characters, which is pretty cool. Because the, the Lassie was the name of a character. His actual name was Lassiter. They called him Lassie. It's played by uh, Timothy Omenson. And he recently had a stroke. In real life, so it's going to be—it's uh, exciting to see him build, get back to work, and function normally. Do you, you know what? Yeah. Um, Harry Lloyd. Yes. He played um, Daenerys's brother. Oh, he's the dickhead that gets the gold crown. Yeah. Oh. oh. You didn't recognize him. He didn't have blonde hair. Interesting. Now you know. And the last new show that's premiering on the Peacock during their July 15th debut is called Lost Speedways. It's a series exploring great racing cathedrals of the past and created and hosted by Dale Earnhardt Jr. So for all you nice. car people out there, that'll be kind of cool. And then, of course, they're going to have, obviously, all of their standard uh, NBC content that you know and love. But uh, I'll give all these the freebie trial try. And then decide, same with even HBO Max, even though I'm pretty sure HBO Max might be able to, like, take my pocketbook. But. Yeah, I might, I might get HBO Max because all the DC stuff that's on there. Yeah, because they're bringing in all that DC content. Yeah. It looks, honestly, it looks like HBO Max is really determined to be a real deal. Like, some of these, like, I already saw that Quibi is in, like, grave danger of closing down because, they're, like, nobody's downloading it. And Jeffrey Katzenberger is blaming COVID and everybody's like, dude, you can't blame this. This is when people should be watching, you idiot. Yeah. So he may have miscalculated on Quibi. So I wouldn't be shocked if Quibi is like gone. I wouldn't be shocked, honestly, if Apple TV gives up trying to make new content. I think so Because it's been kind of a real bad take. But HBO Max feels different. It feels more like it could be Netflix um, or Hulu, one of the big, big boys. Um, I'm not so sure about Peacock. It might be a... a you know, fiddle out or until you like merge with somebody else. It's a dumb name for a streaming is, service. It is pretty stupid. I mean, they've all got dumb names. Um, and then my last story has to deal with our future uh, uh, king, uh, Jeff Bezos. So I was reading today that Jeff oh, Bezos, Bezos. Yeah. So online, there's been an online shopping boom. And they said that uh, they've never seen numbers of online shopping like this. And since last Black Friday. And they're comparing it that the entire month of April had similar sales. Listen, I'm going to say it slow. The entire month of April had similar daily sales to each Black Friday. So it was an entire month of Black Friday sales. Dude, the entire every month. Every day was Black Friday. <laughs> every single day. So like, it's funny to see these huge like jobless numbers and yet people are still spending money like idiots online. And I've read some interesting things. Two things. I think it's twofold. One, people are buying necessities now online that they would have bought in the stores, right? Right. Uh, but two, people are stress buying. People are stressed out, and it gives them a sense of normalcy to buy junk and have it come to their house. And so those, those two things are going. So this is overall, um, online shopping grew 108% over the year's average in the month of April. Mm-hmm. 108%. That's incredible. So in turn... Our friend Jeff Bezos um, is on track to become the world's the world's first trillionaire, the first one ever. Um, and it's not like it's going to happen 20 years from now. They're saying that Jeff Bezos, at the current rate of Amazon, because while brick and mortar stores have lost over 21 billion dollars in sales during these lockdowns, um, Amazon has picked up 
75 billion dollars more than normal in the last couple of months because of covid yeah. And so Jeff Bezos is on track to become the first ever trillionaire by the year 2026. That's only six years from now. Homie just gave up half of his fortune to his ex-wife, and he's already going to become a trillionaire. I wish she would have hold it, held out, right? She could have been a bajillionaire. I know. <laughs> yeah, so uh, our first ever trillionaire, uh, I'm not sure if that's good for anybody. Uh, the fact that one man will be worth more than the majority of most countries is a little scary. I mean, I mean, as much as I love Amazon and we give Amazon props, we like something has to happen. You can't have one guy have all the money. I'm no crazy like socialist over here, but you can't have people starving and dying and having homie make a trillion dollars all by himself. In fact, he was so worried about this news came out that he gave literally on the same day and they claimed it was COVID related, but he gave every single Amazon worker today a $2 bump. So everybody got a two dollar per hour raise today because Jeff Damn. Bezos is going to be a trillionaire. And they said thank it was you, Lord, a, yeah. Lord Be- Bezos. Thank you, thank you. That's all you Shoot, man, just wait. Everybody thinks it's bad, but you just wait until Jeff Bezos. I mean, he already looks like Lex Luthor. You guys just wait. Everybody's all peeled that- about Elon Musk. You keep your eyes peeled on Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Calling it right now. Was our Superman at? crazy and then my only last tidbit i wanted to hit on before we wrap it up for the episode is the new mutants we you and i both tried to predict that it was going to end up on like hbo max these fools are uh, on disney these fools um are just released a new uh in theaters movie date <laughs> august 28th <laughs> we can expect to see new mutants i'm like get out of here you son no of witches i don't I'd believe still it, but man. many since I can't bet on sports, they should let us bet on this. I'd still bet money that New Mutants comes streaming before it comes into a movie theater. I mean, if it comes to a theater, I'm still going to wait for it to be on streaming to watch it. Oh, for sure. I'm not risking my life for New Mutants. No, yeah. uh, Marvel, a different real Marvel movie maybe, but not New Mutants. So that's all I had, unless you have anything else you want to talk about. Oh, that's it. I'm good. Great. That was a good episode. I liked it. So once again, uh, we are Audionauts. Uh, we are uh, powered by Vigilante Design. If anybody has any Vigilante design work that you need done, we are the best graphic artists out there. Uh, we've been doing stuff here and there. Uh, if you want some gaming logos, you want your own podcaster logo, um, we're, we're your guys. So give us a shout out, vigilantedesign.com. And with that, we will bid you adieu and see you on the flippity flip. You just like bitch stuff everybody. Pop, pop. <laughs>